better next time or this time. And just what I'm going to try to, I don't mean to share my screen, but I'm going to, since it's us, I'm going to give you, come on. Um, well, I'm going to record at my end because I'm about to give you record privileges. That's what I was. Doing. No, I'm, I'll do a local record on okay. the um, on the Mac, and then I mean, then in a way, that's a better um, fallback. How do you um, do that? Would well, you do that in quick in QuickTime? Yeah, you start QuickTime Player, and then um, it doesn't do anything very helpful when you start it. It offers you a file list, I think, and on the file menu, you say new screen right. recording, and that's but, it. And that's it. And if you um, if you use um, you know what you call it um, uh, spotlight search, it's like three command space Q return and then file. What's it? You've got to show built-in microphone and um, okay, and then it just starts. Yeah, and no, built-in microphone. Press the record still... button. There we go. Click to record the full screen and recording. Okay, so it's recording now. Okay, I'll see. I'll do well, it. I'm not sure that recording the microphone is the best thing. That's a bit. Oh, no, I suppose that's recording me. I think that's probably okay. I may need to. Oh, okay. I'm starting to record, but I may need to go downstairs to get better bandwidth, and I'm going to stop my video for the moment. Okay. Just to <clears throat> give it. You're still listening. So here's what I was thinking we could do, and I don't know if this is possible, but if it would take us like you know, three, four, five minutes for you to teach me how to create a list of all tiddlers that I open from this time forward till the time I stop collecting it. I'd have a list of tiddlers that then could, I, we could put into like a story that people could click on as they're watching the video. So it's a way of sort of annotating and creating a, uh, a wiki or, or some footprints of our conversation. So you want to you want to make a list of all of the tiddlers that you modified after a particular time or after a particular point. Actually, not modified, opened. Okay. At the moment, we don't record any information okay. for tiddlers being opened. So okay. we'd have to have a little checkbox or something. Is that okay? Which I could put in the template, right? Take me through again. Take me through again how it's going to work. Okay. So, because uh, we're talking and I, and I run a screen and you kind of direct or say, oh, click here, click here, click there within a wiki um, as reference. And then people watching the video might have a list of those so that they could, instead of just seeing it on the video, they could click on it in their own wiki and get to that tiddler that we might talk about for a minute. And we could say, oh, you should go read this. So this is now live. So we've created a link from the video to um, design right. They can stop the video and read and then start the video and continue. Okay, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm well up for that. I think that's a very good goal to get. If by the end of the course, we get to the point where that works well, I think that would be um, pretty awesome. Um, part of that is the reason why I like YouTube is because YouTube we can automate. Um, you can write JavaScript that jumps a YouTube video to a particular position and that kind of thing. Um, I know there's other disadvantages of Hangouts. Um, but anyway, we can record here and upload to YouTube so we get the same, um, get the same advantages. Um, at the moment, I think it's possible that what we should, the wiki way would be to emphasize the camel case terms that we're coining um, and encourage them to go to the current wiki and to find the things we're talking about by looking for those camel case words so that they act like a human URL, an abbreviated URL. So we know that a word like improve um, or write isn't, um, you know, isn't meaningful on its own, but when we say write, introduction or improving headline writing or something um, that kind of thing um, is more uh, you know is, is an actionable concept um, does that make sense so I'm suggesting that, that, that it's not um, this isn't this doesn't prevent us later from doing electronic links but um, it capitalizes on one of the things that's important about wikis really that 
um, well-chosen camel case words you end up using in email and conversation and other concept, contexts because they act as a good shorthand abbreviated URL link to a, a concept. Does that make sense? It's, it's a hashtag. Camel case, hashtag, same thing. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly yeah. that. Very nice. Yeah. Is it uh, well, hashtag is what we call them now. Yeah. Is it easy to make TiddlyWiki recognize hashtags as tiddlers? Um, the, it's back to the thing I mentioned yesterday, uh, last time, that um, uh, if what we want is to be able to write a hashtag within a tiddler, and then when we press OK for that tiddler to automatically get that hashtag, that's um, a, a question under discussion how best to do that, but it's not possible at the moment. No, I meant to write in a tiddler using a hashtag. And then so that you mention the hashtag and then you get your list of, um, uh, when you click on the hashtag, you get your list of things that carry that tag? Um, well, you get whatever you get, um, I guess, here, so that I can, um... hi, Kathleen. Hi, Hello, Kathleen, by the way. Hello, everybody. Well, um, yeah, so we'll do some brief introductions. Um, um, Kathleen Taylor, introduce yourself, and uh, she's a, a member of Design Right Open stalking us. I've, I've, and funny thing is, she's sitting across the street from me in the same town. No, brilliant. Hello, Kathleen. There's her Kathleen, house. I can't, I can't hear you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And you don't have to say hello if you don't want to. And Connor, hello. You're, hey. you're Hi, Connor. What have I stumbled into? Connor, <laughs> Connor's a student in the undergrad class and um, was struggling the other day getting Dropbox to work. So I'm going to spend, if you, if you don't mind, just one minute with him. We were supposed to meet at nine, but I was late. Um, Connor, you've got your wiki on your thumb drive? Uh, no. Okay. That's what you got to do is get your wiki on your thumb drive, okay? Yep. And um, you can you can listen in as long as you'd like, but if you don't mind, just mute your microphone. And if you've got a question, type it in the chat. Okay. Okay, thanks. So uh, thanks, Jeremy. Sorry about that. So here's what I was – and Kathleen, Jeremy and I recorded a brilliant conversation in hyper, on hypertext and forgot to record it or anyway blew it. And we're going to start in a minute. I only okay. have 10 because I got a class. So here's what I want to do. This is a hashtag. Um, and so, yeah, that didn't work, right? Because it's, and so this isn't going to work. <laughs> uh, not at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's under discussion to make it work. Right. Okay. So the idea is anything. So what you were suggesting is that we talk in camel case, but then how do they, what does that mean? Like somebody can't come back here. Like if we're talking about, and, um, well, let's just start. Okay. So today we're having a conversation. Let's invent it as we go. Um, so, by way of long delayed introduction, um, welcome. This is a repeat performance of conversations about hypertextuality. I'm Steve Schneider at SUNY Polytechnic, and we'll just go around the horn quickly for those who want to introduce themselves. Go ahead. And you're Jeremy. Hello. Hi, I'm Jeremy Rustin. I'm, I'm here um, pretending to be an academic. In fact, I'm a software developer. And I'm responsible for the software that Steve is using, using that you can see hopefully right now, um, which is a personal wiki called TiddlyWiki. Hello, everybody. I'm very glad to be here. Um, I'll introduce myself and explain why I'm about to turn off my microphone. You might be able to hear the construction in the background in my house. Uh, I teach at SUNY Poly. I teach writing, and I'm interested in learning about hypertext. And I've heard very good things about you, Jeremy, from Steve. Ah, oh, Kathleen, thank you. That's very good to hear. I'm looking forward to working with you. And Connor, you're still working on getting that working, but let me know if you've got any troubles, right? Um, okay, so we want to chat a little bit today about um, this idea, right? I wanted to call this hypertext in the wild, but we, we've changed it. Jeremy insists, I think, or, or suggests that we change it and try to talk a little bit about where we find hypertextual examples in the real world, okay? And then this is the first of about six conversations. Today will be a little abbreviated. As you see, you can click here and see why. So here, Jeremy, is the first question. We were just chatting for the prior introduction, which I'm sure we're gonna include in the recording because it was interesting. Um, how can I make this conversation with links from the video into that wiki, um, given that we're not gonna do it digitally? Um. Okay, so um, Steve posed this as a sort of technical question. How can we use, how can we have 
fancy little things popping up in the video that as the video is playing, you could click on to jump to see exactly what we're looking oh, at or the latest version. Yeah, no, that's ideal. You misunderstood. I want to have, I want to, like you said, use the human as the Oh, human. yeah, no. So I was going to say, um, and I'd responded to that request of Steve with a, with a suggestion in a slightly different spirit, which is a bit of a Stone Age thing. But um, it's a very simple idea. It's that when we work in wikis, we often um, create wiki text words to stand for concepts. And there's an example right in front of us here where Steve has written design right as a, as a camel case word. So it's got a capital D and a capital W. In doing that, in, in, it, within the wiki, the mechanism of the thing is that he's made design right be a link. So whenever anybody writes design right in that special way, it's automatically created as a link. But one of the other things that happens when we work with wikis is that then that term, design right, ends up being a kind of shorthand for a place in the wiki. So it's a convenient place for, for people who work together, for instance, to use as um, concepts, names of concepts when they're communicating with one another. It's as if now that Steve has made design right a camel case wiki word in this wiki, he's elevated it to being its own word in our special language that we've evolved. And we can now say to each other, blah, 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 design right, blah, blah, blah. And we know exactly what we're referring to with great precision because we can actually go here and look at the tiddler called design right and see what's there. So you so, can say, but you, I think what I hear is that we can write. Um, and say, so what, 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 if you work, well, I've worked in the past with teams who've been working extensively with wikis. And when you work together with a wiki, part of what you do is you evolve conventions amongst yourselves for how you use it, just as you evolve conventions for how you share the bathroom if you're in the situation of sharing the bathroom. And, um, the, sorry, probably a poor, a poor metaphor in a literary... No, actually, I, a, think the, I think the metaphor is, is... In a literary setting. So part of that set well, of conventions of are, these, are these special terms. And we elevate ordinary words to be these special terms by banging them together. So we see people then doing that in emails and particularly talking. So in a, when, when we're talking, when Steve and I are talking, um, we can um, often, when we're referring to concepts, we will be referring, when we're ref on the wiki, we're referring to things by the camel case term that Steve's already used in the wiki. So it provides, a, yes, a limited verbal shorthand for identifying concepts, but a very powerful um, written shorthand for identifying and linking between them. So, okay, so I, this is what I wanted to test, though. So I just have this thought which of course I should be taking in private, but I think it's interesting to do it sort of in public here. So I remember as a political scientist in American politics 101 and students in my 10 o'clock class will hear this story is that someone compared voting to using a public bathroom in a sense, because you go in, you do your business, you leave, you close the door, but you never discuss what happens inside with the person outside. And this was in democratic theory. And that's, it was an argument in a sense for public voting because it's an intimate act. And what you're suggesting is that writing is somewhat intimate. Um, but now I, I certainly am. I certainly am. Um, which is why your comparison was apt, or your metaphor. I, okay. Maybe it is. Yes. yes. So now what I, but what I've got. So how do we how do we make a marker to what we were just talking about so that anybody who comes to this wiki can find it quickly when they're watching the video. So we want to make the human the human. Uh, well, I, what we could, I would create a tiddler called verbal links, all one word, camel case. Um, and may not be the best term, mm -hmm. but if we come up with another term, then we can link this tiddler to that other term. Um, and we, verbal links can probably only mean this thing that we're discussing now. And if somebody, comes across it thinking it means something else. To be honest, we probably helps them to right. some serendipity that day. So that would be my, my way of approaching it. But to type into it, right? I, we, we, so, so I think there was that point I said that um, we can use camel case um, um, clearly as a flexible written means of exchanging links. And the assertion here is that it is also occasionally useful to use it as a 
um, uh, to the extent we can as a verbal shorthand for those same concepts. Okay. So the fact that we can, we can be working on the wiki together and then we can go and have a conversation and we can use the same terms if we choose to and if that's our convention to refer to the things that we're talking about. In a way, you've started this wiki with a slightly different approach when I look at the um, uh, cause you've started with the table of contents. And so I think part of the, um, equation you're making with the reader at the moment is, um, here I'm laying out, you know, all the things that I want to talk about and inviting them to peruse them. Whereas what we're doing here, it, this is sort of creating the random nodes that we might later try and knit together into a, a table of contents that makes sense for other people. Um, but this particular verbal links tiddler that we're creating is, well, it's exactly what you asked, really. It's, it's commemorating this tiny thought about um, a poor man's hyperlink um, being to say, or I guess in this case, subtitle, um, the camel case uh, title. Well, I think we could... Tiddly Wiki tracks when I modify the tiddler, right? Mm-hmm. So any tiddler that I open and close has now been modified. And yeah, you sometimes you have to actually do something to it, because otherwise Tiddly Wiki smartly says, oh, you didn't really change anything. I won't okay. mark it as so modified. I have but... to leave my mark in a tiddler, save yeah. it, and then I could have a list of all the thing, tiddlers that I modified in the past 20 minutes, and that's, those are the ones we just talked about. That's what I want. Yeah, so the, the easy way to do that is um, on the recent um, yeah. list in the yeah. sidebar um, is just literally copy and paste from that, or you can drag and drop those individual links into another tiddler. Okay, got it. So there, we spent most of our time talking about what we're going to do in true software design fashion and very little talking about what we should be talking about. But I think the conversation yeah. is really what's, that's part of this conversation. So what I wanted to do is just, briefly talk about where we find hypertext in today's web. Okay. Um, so, and what we did, what we do, what we're doing here is really walking through a bunch of hypertextual techniques. Um, and the question is whether these are in my question, at least is whether this is a decent list and not, not a good list. And I'm trying to come up with a list of techniques, things that people do um, that are distinctively hypertextual and as a social scientist, as a scholar, the goal of my list is to make it um, so that each word has its own meaning, but with all of my words, I cover the full spectrum. It's called exhaustive, and um, there's another half of it, which I forget what it is. Um, Kathleen? Yeah, inclusive or something. I'll come up with the word. It's, uh, well, I'm very impressed. That, 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 I must say, is the signature skill of the academics that I've been lucky enough to work with. So I hope you can do that. And uh, I'd echo what Steve's saying, that this is, um, this is an attempt to pull together the essence of what we think is important about hypertext. And part of the discussion is, um, is the stuff that you know out there, notably the web, is that hypertext or do we mean something slightly different? And uh, the, the way that Steve is approaching this, of trying to make this exhaustive, complete list of the primitives that make up the hypertext experience, is obviously appealing to me, because as a software guy, I need to think about how to assemble the software as a tool that reflects that, that's got the sort of minimum mechanisms necessary to furnish the abilities that we identify as being necessary for this experience. So, uh, yeah, it's somewhere in this book. I will look it up. It's exhaustive, and I can't believe I can't remember the other half of it. Um, but it's uh, mutually exclusive. There it is. Mutually exclusive and exhaustive. Okay. Very good. Mutually exclusive and exhaustive sounds great. Yeah. Um, and that's helpful because I, uh, I can critique uh, on that basis. And so the first one I have is linking, which I think we agree is pretty much the essence of the web and and I don't want to spend too much time on it because I think we get what links are um, right so they allow you to move um, and they imply a movement from one object to another one node to another one page to another one tiddler to another from a tiddler to a page or any two objects in some space um, and what we're what the conversation that we had in the beginning was how do we create a link from this conversation that you're watching on a video back to this tiddly wiki and, so and I think the way that I answered it, and 
um, suggest part of what I think is very important here, that is that links exist within our brains primarily. And everything else that we talk about is attempts, for me, to mirror the links that we see in our brains and that work so well in our brains in the media and the tools that we use, um, if that makes sense. So I think links, this idea that you can simultaneously have multiple things connected in, in fact, very complicated patterns. Um, that's innate to us, I think, to, to the way that our brains work. And I would go further based on my work and say that a lot of the people that I encounter who use TiddlyWiki talk quite explicitly about the working of their brains. And a lot of that is in terms of linkages, not just links in the sense of a, a uh, a, a hypertext transport, um, you know, beaming in Star Trek terms from one place to another, but links in the sense of relationships that they think of as links between multiple entities. And I think it's a, it's a, in my own experience is that it's, it's part of what we do when we think is you know, manipulate a small number of things and their relationships in our heads. So, um, the, the way that the There's wiki is in there, right though, because I'm so sorry? There's some tension because you use linking to mean something much broader than I do. Yes. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I'm using linking in this very narrow way that is in this this tiddler. Well, link. this is this is linking in. It's exactly as the tiddler title. This is how links are expressed in wikis, um, and um, and that's uh, yeah, that's this sort of multi-dimensional space of links sliced through by the two-dimensional space of wikis. And this is, for, you know, in my everyday work, this is how I think about links as well. It's only when we're coming at it from that taxonomical point of view. Right, exactly. And that's what I'm trying to get to with my definition of linking, that taxonomical perspective, because I, then I have filtering, which is a sort of form of linking. Right, so so you're using linking as an umbrella term. I think that I'm use, I'm calling hypertextual techniques. And well, I'm very pleased you came up with the exclusive thing because um, I think that uh, you'll you'll satisfy those two goals better if you think of filtering as choosing. So it's given a set of things. Um, here's the basis for selecting some of them, um, and you know, and doing something with them is is the next step. Um, but uh, initially, it's about choosing. Choosing, who's choosing? Um, specifying to, um, re perhaps retrieving um, and specifying. It's more like a, um, I don't, I was hesitating to use sort of computery work, work, words, but it's um, uh, what we're literally doing with filtering is there's a population of pages, tiddlers that we could show, and the filter is telling us which ones to include in the list. So um, it's very like you know old-fashioned computer data processing. This is a this is a query. You tell the computer a bunch of stuff, and it beetles off and comes back with the answer. That's what filtering is at a sort of brutal technical um, level. Um, but I think choosing um, is. I was thinking of the most childish word that I could. You know, the vocabulary of two hundred and fifty words. What words do, do we have available to describe what's happening? And so for that, I'm imagining a bunch of index cards on the table. And I say to you, Steve, give me the ones that you've changed in the last 20 minutes. You choose some of those off the table, stack them up and pass them to me. Um, so it seems like a very, you know, and perhaps it's helpful in order to satisfy your criteria. Very filtering is one of those weasel words that nobody really knows what it means. We're choosing at least in the conceptual realm is fairly unambiguous. You know, I think I like that a lot because filtering is, you filter, you might filter in your brain, but you don't actually write a filter. In a sense, you write a choose. And so when you- Yeah, write, and, and I like the idea that choosing, to me, encompasses two slightly different things. One is give me all the things modified in the last 10 minutes, so it's a kind of a query. Um, and the other is where I've gone through and said, I want this one, this one, and this one. Um, and perhaps a combination of them. I want this one and this one and all the things modified in the last 20 minutes. And so I quite like that ambiguity with the term choosing, that it's not clear whether it's me or the computer that's doing the choosing. Mm -hmm. And generally, I mean both or I want both. Okay. So what I just did, by the way, and this is sort of by way of a comment just to explain what you just saw happen in TiddlyWiki, is I was able to take some notes 
I um, created a, I'm going to close my menu here. Um, I did a demo case, perhaps I should have, but I didn't. That's fun. But that's interesting, right? So I just wrote choosing, I enclose it in double square brackets, and it still doesn't think it exists yet. Up here, I started the tiddler called choosing, so it's called draft of choosing. So I'm gonna save it. Um, and then just to kind of give you an idea of what I did, because I'm gonna go back and fix this later, so you might not ever get a chance to see this, because um, it won't be here in a few minutes maybe, or when I get to it. But I said, you know, choosing, I'm gonna replace filtering with choosing, and but I know there's some deep links embedded, so I have to do it a little bit carefully as a writer. So I said it's based on filtering, and then I just want to include it, and I just transclude, bring in the other tiddler called filtering. Um, but I'm guessing that Steve is going to turn is going to turn that into a copy and paste. Into what? Oh, I just lost. But I'll save this. Jeremy just froze. I don't know whose internet went off, but anyway. Um, He'll come back. Connor, you got a question? Connor, did you have a question while Jeremy is off in? Yeah. Um, I made my About Me Tiddler, but I don't really know why it's not working. Okay. Um, can you share your screen? Are you still there or did we just lose you? Um, I'm still here. Can you okay. hear me? I've Let's turned see. my camera off. Oh, okay. That's why. Yeah. Okay. That's and I've mo I'm moving to a different location, which will have better Wi-Fi coverage. Okay. Um, Connor, you got class till like 3.30, right? Till 3.30, yeah. Yeah. So um, let's just catch up with you here in between your class. If you've got a break or something, I'll pretty much be online all day. Okay? All right. So just like sometime in between class. Um, I think um, I'd, I'd, I'd jump in and say that um, if we've got time, we should fix Connor um, in the time at the end, perhaps, because I'd be quite interested to see Okay, what's let's do that. Going share wrong. your screen, Connor. Go for it. Oh, uh, it says I can't share my screen while another participant is sharing. Oh, that would be me. <laughs> Okay, so um, go on the uh, the tab on the left, the first tab. Okay, and um, where's the Tiddly Wiki you modified? Um, I just created it over here. I didn't. Okay, I see what you're doing. Okay, so go to Design Right. And um, see where it says getting started with TiddlyWiki? Uh, where's it? Um, Back where's to it? like click here if this is your first visit. And um, let's see. Yeah, I've buried some of this stuff because we, I should, uh, first visit. This is a, you were visiting a learning community. Um, please, so click on design write a learning community. I'm sorry, I guess I've buried this for new visitors. Um, ooh, yeah, that's interesting. So um, while you're finding the link, um, I, I think, um, so the problem is that you're trying to edit yes. your own TiddlyWiki from the sharing URL. So your second tab, Connor, um, the URL that you've got there um, is the URL that you'd give to somebody else if you wanted them to be able to read your wiki. But he, hasn't you, downloaded, he hasn't downloaded it yet. What I can see over on the left-hand side there is your Explorer window, right? Um, and that in that Explorer window there, it looks like you've got your same file design. I oh know, but maybe you need to find that designright.html file. Yeah, but he hasn't in downloaded your it. Dropbox somewhere, and then open that in. Well, the, but the file we see on the top right um, is that. URL is that your URL, Steve? Yeah, yeah. You oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, to, so, so, so that, that, that is, started. 
a good way to to get started here um, might be. So sorry, um, Connor, you got two people um, shouting in your ear. So do forgive me. But um, over on the right hand side of where it says design right in red, there's a downward pointing arrow. If you click that to get that menu, you're very good. Um, and then say um, save changes, which is in red near the bottom. Um, then it's going to prompt you to download the file and so save it somewhere sensible in your Dropbox and yeah go there um jolly good your screen's frozen for me Connor but uh that was pretty excellent and so now drag that file back into the empty tab bar, tab bar of Firefox, so to the right of the two tabs that you've got there, so that that file opens as a new tab in Firefox. Exactly that, brilliant. And um, now just check that you can create, you can save changes. So go to that same right, the same down arrow, select save changes, and we just need to see what it does. Okay, so we haven't got Tiddly Fox installed as the next stage. Um, so, Connor, there's a Firefox extension that hopefully Steve will now put the link in the window for you that you need to install before you can save changes directly. But the you can cancel that dialogue, Connor. And um, the the takeaways here is that the this URL that you've got in the address bar now, that's the one that you use for editing it. And okay. then later, Steve will show you how to generate a URL that's a dropbox.com URL that he can use to view it. Okay. I'm gonna do I hope that makes sense. You were following instructions extremely competently. I'm sure you know what you're doing very well, do you? But do me a favor, Connor, and search in, in the search box there for getting started. Nope, uh, he means the search box under the under uh, yeah with search for getting started all one word there you go and it's right um, nope next one down getting started with tiddly wiki and um, click the uh, design right toolkit this assumes that you've done all this so you want to start with Dropbox but then we're just going to skip to the third step toolkit tiddly wiki and click on download empty no, 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 but Steve, I've, um, he's done that now, hasn't no, he? Yeah, so oh, I see, yeah, no, of course he's yeah. got the wrong one. Yeah. Hit OK, hit OK. OK, except, uh, oh, you're using Internet Explorer here, right? Uh, no, I'm on Firefox. OK, and then so go to your download window or show and find, your, what are you on, Windows version here? Yeah, and so right click on that and so you can um, open containing folder. Uh, wait, open the folder. You want it, You want that folder called empty.html somewhere. So open containing folder. There you go. Drag that file called empty into your thumb drive. Uh, how do I get to my thumb drive? Uh, you you got to put your thumb drive in the computer. Yeah, it's plugged in. Yeah. Um, is it visible on the on? Yeah. So op open the file to view folders. There you go. Now move those and drag it from one folder to the next. All of them? Just empty. Okay. Okay, now um, rename empty and call it Connor. Okay. Okay, now on, you know, and now right click on Connor and open with, open with Firefox. Open with, down to seven, yep. There you go, and Firefox, okay? And um, you probably don't have Tiddly Fox installed because you're on a school computer, right? Right. Okay, try to, um, I'm gonna have to catch up with you um, at some point later today, but you've got something on your thumb drive and if you can try to figure out, open it and save it and see if you can um, master that. If not, send me an email and we'll chat when you've got five minutes, but I've got a class of 10 that I have to run to. Okay. Okay. Um, Jeremy, Connor, I can take five minutes with you if that if that helps. Okay. okay. That would be great. Um, but you see the issue, Jeremy. He needed to download empty.html and yeah, yeah, sure. And no, we need to figure out a way to get Connor's a um test case for me to figure out how somebody can take the course on a thumb drive. 
So, I mean, it looks like the next step is installing Tiddly Fox, isn't it? I think so, and I don't know if you'll have permissions to do that. It's, uh, okay. it's, a, it's a university computer. It might work, it might not. And so you might, need to, you might need to put Firefox on his thumb drive and... Ugh. Oh, Lord. Okay. All right, well, I'll, let, I'll leave it. Though, I got a class at 10. Thanks, Jeremy. Okay. I'll catch you. Kathleen, nice to see you. I'll catch you later. Okay, bye-bye. No Cheers, Steve. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you. See you. And so am I staying on with Connor or not? It's up to you. Uh, he's yeah, no, got Connor, class, he's got a class of 10. No, he, Connor's got a class of 10 too. Oh, he's got a class, no, of, I got a class of 12. Oh, you got a class of 12. Yeah. There, you've got the master all to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Okay.